right, so we're going to talk about the venous drainage of the inside of the skull, uh, of the brain as such. We'll talk briefly about the meninges. Uh, so a meninx is a, a covering. There are three meninges. There are three layers uh, around your central nervous system. So you've got your central nervous system, your brain and your spinal cord and such. You've got a thin protective layer that's adhered right to the surface of the CNS, and that is your pia mater, right? Your little mother. This is the Latin mater. That's uh, like the, the starter you use for sourdough bread or um, uh, vinegar when you're trying to ferment something. That kind of mother, not uh, mommy, daddy, mother. Right? Superficial to the pia mater is a space uh, that's filled with these sort of little wispy uh, structures. And since it looks like cobwebs, uh, I guess, that red layer is the arachnoid mater. Arachnoid mater. And that is a real space. This space is referred to as the subarachnoid space, the SAS. That'll be important um, in the next video. And then over top of all of that, adhered to the arachnoid, you've got the dura mater, the tough mother. The dura mater is pain sensitive, innervated. So when you get um, meningeal or, or some headaches, uh, vascular headaches, it's because the meningeal arteries that supply the dura are. Um, uh, causing problems. The dura mater has two potential spaces. Just superficial to the dura mater is the, the periosteum of the skull, internal periosteum of that diploid bone of the skull plates, and potentially you could have an epidural space, so you could get um, blood, pus, uh, air, fluid, all sorts of things in the epidural space. And then there, between the dura and the arachnoid mater, you could get a subdural space. Now, they're not there normally, but you could potentially have a subdural or an epidural uh, hematoma, for instance. Let's say you tear a meningeal artery. It's going to bleed between the periosteum and the dura and press in uh, as an into the epidural space, right? And then you could have a bleed of uh, one of the veins or the superficial arteries of the brain and bleed into the subdural space um, and peel between the arachnoid and the dura mater. So those are just um, some potential issues with meninges. We'll go into that in more detail in another video. What's gonna be important is the dura mater actually folds in a couple places. It delaminates or it'll separate a couple layers and fold in and back on itself inside your skull. So from a frontal view, uh, 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 frontal view, we come up with the skull, okay, the top of my top of my cranium, and my dura mater is going to run up along with the periosteum of the bone. But when it gets right to the top, a second little layer is going to peel off and dip down between as it continues along between the two hemispheres of my brain, leaving this sort of triangular shaped opening that's gonna be referred to as the superior sagittal sinus, right? So the sinus is gonna be an opening uh, in the layers of the dura, or formed by the layers of the dura, that are gonna serve the function the same as a vein elsewhere in the body. It's gonna be part of your venous drainage system. I'm gonna show you where there are some different sinuses. This portion of the dura that folds down between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. You can draw your brain in there, I guess. There's a brain. All right, there's a brain. Corpus callosum here, joining the right and left hemispheres. All right, those are your temporal lobes. You're going to get another fold of the dura here along the petrosal ridge of the temporal bone that's going to um, come in sort of right around the midbrain and the pons, and behind that you've got your cerebellum, right, which would occupy that posterior medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain. Okay. This little in, these two infoldings here along that petrous bone is called the tentorium cerebelli. The tentorium cerebelli, and it's going to slip in between the temporal and uh, deep, the occipital lobes and the um, cerebellum itself and some of the midbrain. So these infoldings 
the Falk Cerebri and the Tentorium Cerebelli will help separate the brain into a right and left intracranial compartments and sort of a, um, an upper and a lower uh, intracranial compartments. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. So now what I'm going to do, do is draw some of the sinuses from a lateral view. Right? So from a lateral view on the brain, <clears throat> I'm draw a brain over here. My cartoon brain. Okay. So you're going to get some venous drainage. And it's going to kind of look like this. So picture where your brain's at. You've got your... Um, I use red so I can draw the cranial fossas. The temporal, the frontal lobe sits in that superior frontal fossa, uh, superior cranial fossa that sits over the, the eyes, right? Forms the orbit. Then you've got that middle cranial fossa that's formed uh, somewhat by the sphenoid bone and uh, have the telus, the cella turcica is located in the midline, and the temporal lobe sort of sit there. And then you've got that other, that last little step, which is the, the, the floor of the skull where the foramen magnum is to allow the skull, the spinal cord to exit, where you get your pons and your cerebellum. So you get these sort of stair step floor of the inside of the skull. Um, you see that pretty good if you go back and watch the, uh, the skull bones videos. And anyway, they kind of sit down like that. And the tentorium cerebelli would be here between the cerebellum and the occipital temporal lobes. And then the falx cerebri would come down. This is that superior sagittal sinus in the dura, right at the center line of the skull above uh, the, the cerebral hemispheres. And then you've got an inferior sagittal sinus that runs along the free edge of that falx cerebri that runs down between the hemispheres. Right? The superior sagittal sinus will drain and continue all the way back to near the occipital lobe uh, at the base of the skull, and if you feel that EOP, the external occipital protuberance of the occipital bone, and you would take a DeWalt uh, drill and drill into that, you'd come right into this large opening called the confluence of sinuses. Confluence of sinuses. The superior sagittal sinus will drain blood down there. The inferior sagittal sinus will then drain via the straight sinus, straight sinus, into the confluence of sinuses, uh, kind of where the tentorium cerebelli comes around. The confluence of sinuses will then drain along the base of the tentorium cerebelli around um, right and left base of your skull in the transverse sinuses. Oops. Transverse sinuses. The transverse sinuses will come around to the ventral surface of the brainstem and they'll drain in these little S-shaped, right and left S-shaped uh, sinuses called sigmoid sinuses. And the sigmoid sinuses will then leave the skull uh, as part of the internal jugular drainage, uh, internal jugular vein. Uh, there are several other veins. There's some superficial veins, superficial middle cerebral vein, and a lot of anastomotic veins uh, from there up to the sagittal sinus, um, some deep and perforating veins. But they're all basically going to drain into these sinuses, and it comes back to the confluence of sinuses. Without the brain, it kind of looks like this. Superior sagittal, inferior sagittal, straight sinus, confluence of sinuses, transverse right and left, sigmoid, sigmoid, and then out through the internal jugular. That's not as good as this. But that's uh, the basic uh, framework uh, overview of how the venous uh, drainage system inside the, the skull. This is also going to tie in with the CSF, the ventricular system, which I'll do in the next video.